We subscribe to the 10-foot rule of varnish maintenance onboard Calypso, meaning as long as it looks good from 10 feet away, you're probably in pretty good shape. How about some tips for on how we keep our varnish looking good? Listen on, and you'll hear three of my favorite tricks for varnishing. Hi, I'm Nika Waters, and welcome to the Boat Galley Podcast. I'm talking varnish tips, actually some specific tools that we love when we're talking about varnish. Today's episode of the Boat Galley Podcast is sponsored by SailDauntless.com, your personalized sailing adventure in the most beautiful locations. Experience the utmost in luxury cruising just the way you want it. Get back into the sailing groove on board this gorgeous 52-foot sailboat where every single detail is taken care of for you. Now booking in Newport, Rhode Island and the Hamptons, New York for summer 2021. Use coupon code SD15 for 15% off any seven-night all-inclusive sailing charter July through September 2021. Ready to live the dream? SailDauntless.com. Let our experience inspire yours. I'm going to say right up front that I am neither a professional varnisher nor a perfectionist. I really mean it when I say that we aim for the looks good from five feet level of varnish excellent. We are not going to hold up if you're coming at us with a magnifying glass. Remember some basics about varnish are that like any kind of paint or or coating work, the devil and the details are in the preparation. It's absolutely worth it to be careful and take your time and spend lots and lots of time sanding and cleaning and sanding and sanding and cleaning and cleaning and thinking about where you're going to be storing the piece while it's drying and what else needs to be done because it can take a long time. It can take up to a day between coats of varnish to get to the tack-free stage depending on the humidity and the the heat where you happen to be varnishing. That means that dust and stuff can collect and stick on your beautifully, gorgeously sanded and varnished piece of whatever that long. So don't varnish something and leave it in the same room that you're then going to vacuum because the vacuum dust will go flying all over your freshly done varnish piece and it will ruin all your work. So just think about those kinds of details. Think through all the little bits and pieces before you start getting out a brush. I'm not going to tell you what varnish is right for you. You have to figure that out for you. Hear what people are saying and why they're using the different varnishes, but uh, you have to decide for yourself. So, but that said, I'm going to go with three tips today for varnish work. One, has to do with uh, perhaps being a cheapskate. <laughs> I'm going to go with that right off the bat. We have boxes of old paints and old varnishes that we are unearthing as we're getting ready to leave to go cruising. And if you are at all aware of the cost of any kind of boat stuff, you know that it's expensive. So when we're faced with lots and lots of old cans of varnish that seem to still be okay, you might open them and try them. Well, my hint for you is that if you're doing that, try, no, not try, do. Coat a piece of wood with the varnish that you are hoping is still going to be good. Use the same kind of wood that you will be putting the varnish onto. Use the same kind of application method that you are going to be using on the real piece of wood. See how it behaves. Actually, this is probably a good idea for anything, not just varnish, any kind of a coating. If you are going to be putting varnish over paint, we actually did this on the electrical panel. We had a piece of wood that we painted black and we wanted to varnish over it to keep it from getting dinged. Test the varnish that you want to use over the paint that you want to use, but don't do it initially on the piece that matters. This tip also applies, though, if you're trying to figure out what kind of varnish you want to use. Buy a small can, yes, it's going to be more expensive than that, and try it out on your preferred piece of kind of wood using your preferred kind of application method. Don't go to YouTube and see what they've done and say, oh, that looks great. You are not necessarily going to be happy with what you see. You might use that as an idea of the different kinds that you want to try, 
narrow it down to maybe two or three, but don't take their uh, videos as gospel. I, I can share a reason why if you really want to know. Tip number two, foam brushes. Yes, again, I'm not a professional, nor am I a perfectionist, but foam brushes are absolutely 100% our favorite way to apply varnish. You don't have to worry about brush marks. You don't have to worry about cleaning up your brushes with toxic chemicals that make you go running and scrubbing your hands off and wearing a respirator to use them at all. They're cheap enough that you can throw them away. They do a great job not showing brush marks. And if you talk to a professional, I'm sure that they would be horrified at the idea of using foam brushes. We like foam brushes, super easy to deal with, and we particularly like how they work with varnish. And tip number three is something that's a little bit, we just discovered this or just figured this out not too long ago. One of the things with varnish in particular, well, any really any kind of a, a coating, but varnish seems to be really on our minds, is that once you open it, as soon as you get any kind of varnish or paint along the lip of the can, it will make that can almost impossible to close super tightly. And the way that your paint or varnish stays good longer is by keeping air out. Well, if you can't close the top completely, you're not going to keep the air out and it's going to skin over and go bad faster. So rather than pouring any of the varnish into a separate container, and no, we're not dipping a foam brush back into the same container, into the, the brand new can, because it is often contaminated. Even if you've done your best job ever wiping things down, there's still probably going to be some dust or some varnish stuff or goop or maybe the odd bug that's gotten on there before you've managed to get it out. And you don't want to put that back into the varnish can. So use a syringe to decant the varnish into a separate container. You can buy syringes that don't have needles on them uh, and you can buy them in multi-packs, which is fantastic. You can get, get the bigger ones because then you can decant a lot in one syringe push as opposed to a lot of small ones. But if you use a syringe to decant the varnish into a separate container, that means that you can keep the varnish from being contaminated by air. It means that you can keep the lip clean and it means that you're not going to get any gunk into your varnish. Apparently, there are pour packs that you can buy that you can pour your varnish into, uh, which are sort of like refillable wine bladders that will help keep the oxygen out and won't let any of that nasty stuff in that I'm talking about. My issue with that or the hard thing that we have with that is that you can't see what you are doing in terms of mixing, in terms of making sure that the solids are evenly distributed within the varnish. I like to be able to stir and see what I'm dealing with and make sure there's nothing kind of gunky left on the bottom. So may your varnish go on smoothly. And when we share an anchorage someday in the not too distant future, don't come with a magnifying glass to inspect my varnish. Thank you so much for listening to the Boat Galley podcast. We love it when we hear from our listeners. There's an email for both me and Carolyn in the show notes. We love it when you subscribe. We hope you have the most spectacular week and we'll talk to you next week.